Hey everybody, Jeremy here. Welcome to episode 10 of Action Figure Window Shopping. A little something that I do every week. I check out some cool toys and collectibles that really got my interest over the past week and then I come back and share it with you. So this is the 10th episode, let's jump right in. Now, it's almost a tradition at this point to start things off with some figures from McFarland Toys because let's face it, like every week there's something new to check out. And this is kind of like a continuation of last week with this figure. So this is the Drifter, Batman action figure from the upcoming movie, The Batman. Now, if you might remember um, when McFarlane first revealed this figure, it got a lot of backlash. People were dragging this figure through the mud. Just It just did not look good. He looked kind of fat and bulky. It just it just wasn't received very well. They took down that original image that they showed over on Instagram, but now we've got some new artwork. Now, this is the unmasked version. There's gonna be two versions. The unmasked Drifter is gonna be a Target exclusive, now exclusively at Target. So if you want to pre-order this, you can get it from direct, get it directly from Target. But then there's also a masked version that I'm going to show you that's going to be more widely available. So there you go. Um, still not a fan of this figure. Still don't think that it looks all that good. And it still has that dreaded side eye that a lot of us are just absolutely tired of. And it seems like McFarland is really bent on... Um, really kind of bring a more statue-esque aesthetic to this DC Multiverse line as opposed to just letting action figures be action figures. It's almost as if like inside of his mind, he has an idea of how he wants the figures to look, how he wants them to stand. And I understand that, but when you're dealing with action figures, you can't have eyes going to one side or the other because if you pose them with other figures or if you want them to be posed in a certain way, you have to you have to do it according to where those eyes are moving. And when they're side eyes like this, it's really limiting. So man, I really hope that enough feedback gets back to McFarlane Toys so that they can just stop this and just give us back the regular straight ahead eyes. Cause the side eye thing, man, it's not working. I can't I can't think of a single uh, pro for keeping side eyes. All right, so that's the unmasked version. Here is the masked version. This is on Big Bad Toy Store. And honestly, I like the masked version more, probably because it hides the face and it gives a little bit more mystery to it. So again, overall as a figure, still not really liking it. So most likely I will not pick this figure up, but the mass look to me is better than the unmasked look. Oh, why won't they just put two heads in the same box and then you won't have to have two different versions? Well, that's because they won't make as much money. We know that, but it still maintains this same kind of bulky aesthetic to this figure, which I think has turned people off. But here's the thing. He is meant to go along with his motorcycle that I'm gonna show in just a second. So I was thinking maybe the reason why he looks as bulky as he does is perhaps in the movie, maybe he has on something underneath this. Like maybe he's wearing some kind of Batman like armor or maybe he's just really safe about riding motorcycles and he has that all the year, all the time mentality. And when you wear motorcycles, sometimes jackets have armor inside of them, so it looks bulky. So maybe he's wearing an armored jacket. Maybe that's why he looks as bulky as he does. Um, and then when you look at these pants, these don't look like regular old jeans, you know? I mean, look at them. They got different colors on them. They look kind of layered. Perhaps maybe they can be armored jeans. There's armored jeans for people who like to ride. So maybe he's just donned out in full on biker gear that makes him look bulkier. It would be, it would make sense if that were the case. I don't know, don't know for sure, but I'm just trying to make sense of all of this stuff. And here's some more profiles of him. You see that he comes with that backpack. And then of course the, uh, the black eyeshadow around the eyes, of course. And a look at the full packaging from the Batman. All right. 
Now let's take a look at his motorcycle, the old motorcycle, the drifter's motorcycle. Now this is going to be the first normal looking mo motorcycle that McFarland Toys has come out with in this DC Multiverse line. This is a cafe racer style motorcycle, which is designed for speed and handling and not necessarily for comfort. But the great thing about this is it's not a bat cycle. So something like this can be used with all kinds of figures that share this same scale. So you don't have to feel like you're stuck to making, you know, uh, this only fits one character or this only fits one universe. This bike can fit a variety of different figures outside of McFarlane toys. And I like that. So of course it, um, comes with a helmet, a stand, and of course the trading card. You know, it's pretty cool that it comes with a stand. Um, I'm hoping that it also has a kickstand, so maybe you can stand it up on its own using a kickstand, but it has that base on the back. So it's always nice to have. And then these trading cards that McFarlane Toys all come with. Um, here's a look at how he's gonna look on the bike. So it scales well. Um, I'm not a fan of these trading cards. And it, when you look at it, there was a time when the artwork for these trading cards would be like comic book artwork. But you look at this now, it's just, um, it's art from the figure. And I, I wish it was some more original art. I understand that this is a movie, it's a live action movie. So maybe they couldn't grab a still from the movie in order to put on that card or, you know, something like that. But, you know, I wish that they had done it that way. Um, here's some other figures that they just announced earlier this week. Here's an unmasked Batwoman Beyond. And then we can look at the card for this one too. As you can see, look at that card. It's a card of the action figure. It's not a card from any comic or, or a television show or anything. So, you know, I would like to see, I don't even care for the cards, but if you're going to have the cards, you know, I would like to see some graphic novel artwork or just some artwork from whatever property this came from and not just of the toy. I have the toy, so I don't need a picture of the toy. You know what I mean? And also with this figure, they're still doing that darn side eye. There's a side eye again. You know, it's, it's coming. It's coming. I mean, look at this. So basically, if you wanted her to fly with like her head up, she's looking straight ahead or whatever, you can't do that because she's always going to be looking in that one direction. It's extremely limiting. It's, it, it makes it makes me personally not even want to buy the figure. Um, here's another one they showed. I don't even know how to pronounce is unique. I don't know. As Batman Beyond, basically it looks like a repaint of um, the Terry McGinnis Batman Beyond that we've gotten before. This one is just blue and black with some speckled blue throughout. No side eyes because the eyes are all white. And then here is a uh, meltdown version of Blight from Batman Beyond. Now the original Blight is available right now. You can check Target has one of the pieces for the Joker bot build a figure wave. This Blight looks cooler than that one because of course it does, but you have to buy the original one if you want to get the build a figure piece for the Joker bot. And if you want the one that looks cooler, then spend up another 20 bucks so that you can get this meltdown version of Blight. Once again, can't really tell for the side eyes because of how it's designed, but here's the card again. See, it's a card of the action figure and not of the original works. Ah, that's a shame. But those are the McFarlane Toys releases or um, new things for this week. Now, the next thing that I want to show is from a line that I've said in the past is way too expensive, but darn it, it's so tempting. So this is from Super 7. This is their wave two of their Simpsons Ultimate figures. And in this wave, we get Bart as Bartman. We get Duffman, Krusty the Clown. He comes with a Mr. Teeny accessory and my personal, personal favorite, Hank Scorpio. So let's look at this Hank Scorpio figure real quick. This is why I want him, even though it's $54.99. He has that flamethrower. Now, if you know, then you know. The Hank Scorpio episode of The Simpsons where Homer gets this new job and 
Hank Scorpio and his company and the type of boss that he is, is the type of boss that everyone would like to have. You know, just a really easygoing working atmosphere. You can sleep in hammocks while you're on the job. They hook you up with a great house and a great neighborhood and everything's wonderful. Boss is a bit of a sociopath. He took over the East Coast, but man, it was really nice before, you know, he killed James Bond. But anyway, uh, the accessories that he comes with Pretty much the is just going to be the flamethrower, but you do get three interchangeable heads, including the one that he comes with. A couple of interchangeable hands, a world's best boss. Yes, you are, Mr. Scorpio. A mug, and if I get no other figure from this line, it would definitely have to be Hank Scorpio. Uh, but once again, I think that it is overpriced. I think they all are. Fifty-four ninety-nine for this guy, seven-inch scale, so it's a pretty good scale. But these figures are never going to be like really awesomely articulated. You kind of look at it and see what kind of articulation it's going to have. It's going to be fairly basic, not so much different from um, what we saw a long time ago with the World of Springfield line that was released a long time ago. And when NECA did their um, guest stars, Simpsons characters, and they kind of made some original cast characters as well, but a lot of them were guest stars. Those really weren't articulated in any meaningful way, um, but these figures are a little bit of a step up from that, but the price is nearly triple of what those were. So yeah, that's the only downside about these that you know I can see. But let's just look at the other figures in this wave. They got them all right here. So there's Bartman, the accessories that he comes with, Santa's little helper, skateboard, slingshot, Bird's Nest, a copy of Radioactive Man, and a bunch of interchangeable hands and a few different heads. And then Duff Man, also with three interchangeable heads. The Foam Finger, six pack of Duff Beer, Santa's Little Helper again. So you get two Santa's Little Helpers in this wave. And we already looked at Hank Scorpio. There's Krusty the Clown, as well as Mr. Teeny. He comes with some Krusty O's with the with a jagged metal crusty o if you're lucky enough to find that one in the box and then he also has the robe banana cream pie couple of uh, interchangeable hands microphone and three heads as well awesome stuff all right so those are the simpsons things now Here's something else that I wanted to show. I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, video games. They got some Battletoads action figures coming out from Premium DNA. These are pretty pricey, but if you just want to kind of get the main guys, we got Rash and we got Zitz here, 60 bucks a pop. Man, these toys. But here you go. Here is Zitz and the accessories that he comes with include a giant plow, a drill arm, and a giant spiked fist. You know, if you play Battletoads, you know that you kind of got to have these giant accessories as part of their uh, combos. Eventually their hands get huge, their legs get, or their feet get huge, something along those lines. And so they needed to have those. Um, you don't get Battletoads figures often at all. And that's probably why they cost as much as they do. But this is in the six, six inch scale. So it's not that big, but it is pretty pricey. And here is a look at Rash, which I think if you were gonna get one figure from this line, it will probably be Rash. You know, kind of reminds you of Raphael. And of course he, I said of course a lot in this video, but he has some giant accessories as well. A giant spiked boot and a mace. There's the giant spiked boot right there. There's the mace and there's the ax. And then if you want to spend a little bit more money, you can get the big boy here, General Slaughter. Whoo boy, 15 inches tall. This is a big figure. And we get 12 inch figures, you know, those are huge, but 15 inches, oh my goodness, 150 bucks. So it is up there, but the detail looks really good on this guy. And he comes with a couple of pairs of hands and three head scopes, but still that $150 price tag, oh man, that is, that's gonna be tough. So you really gotta be into Battletoads in order to really convince yourself to pick something like this up. Um, 
And now let's move over to another Super 7 um, little collection here of wrestling figures. Only really interested in two of these. So we got Matt Cardona and we also have Brian Meyer. Uh, Brian Meyer. So Matt Cardona, formerly Zack Ryder in WWE. Um, since being released from WWE, a lot of these wrestlers, they really just seem to be enjoying themselves, going on these different promotions and just really being themselves a lot. And they seem to be having a lot of fun. And um, Matt Cardona and Brian Myers, they do have a podcast and a YouTube channel. The Major Wrestling Figure Podcast is what it's called. And, um, you know, I check them out pretty frequently here on YouTube. But this is really good stuff. This is a great likeness of Matt Cardona, I think. And then he comes with a little action figure, a bunch of money because he's the million dollar broski. There's some more artwork from the two of them. He also has some dog tags, three interchangeable heads, all varied interchangeable heads, you know, more than just a different expression. You know, he's got the tongue out on this one. He's got the hat on that one, couple interchangeable hands. You know, looks really good, I think. Seven inch scale, so it's a good size. And $44.99, which it ain't bad. Not bad, not a bad price. And then going over to Brian Myers, formerly Kurt Hawkins. He has uh, similar accessories, you know, with the figure and the microphone. He also has a mask, which they call the Rona mask, of course. Interchangeable hands, interchangeable head, and some dog tags, you know, and again, just looks really good. And I think $44.99 for this figure, um, not crazy expensive. Uh, so definitely I like those, especially to support those guys. And then they also have for pre-order some of these talking shop, Carl Anderson and Luke, or not Luke Gallows, Doc Gallows uh, figures. Don't really know what Doc Gallows has been up to these days, but I do know Carl Anderson has made himself look pretty bad on more than one occasion in recent memory. So I ain't really interested in the Good Brothers. But far as Matt Cardona and Brian Myers goes, yes. And Super 7 um, I feel like they could have charged more for these because I mean the Simpsons figures cost more than these, you know, but maybe it's a licensing thing, but I like these guys. I really do. Now, the next thing that I want to show is I realize that I haven't really showed much Mezco stuff in these window shopping videos. So I wanted to rectify that. And what caught my eye was this Popeye Deluxe box set. It's $55 which was a lot cheaper than I thought it would be. Now these figures aren't big, they're three and a quarter scale, so they're just under four inches tall, but you get all of this. You get these four figures, you get Popeye, Olive Oil, Bluto, and you get, um, what's the name? Rough House, you get Rough House, the chef. And I used to look at some old Popeye reruns a long time ago when I was growing up, and um, you know, you know Popeye, right? You know, especially if you're around my age or you're older. So, you know, it's, it's got a hint of nostalgia, not too much because, you know, it's way older than I am. But they, these figures, they look good and they come with a lot of things. So you get interchangeable arms for Bluto and Popeye, can of spinach, spatula frying pan, and four display bases. So let's take a look at some pictures here. And look at it, you know, you get this cafe. You get the Rough House Cafe, double-sided playset, creates multiple play environments. I mean, that's pretty good, I think. All that for 55 bucks. And, you know, especially consider some of the Joy Toy figures um, that I reviewed recently. Those by themselves cost about $34, $35 each. So to look at some more three and a three quarter inch scale figures and see that you can get them all combined from a big you know property like this Popeye for 55 bucks from Mezco yeah I like that I like that a lot and I also want to take a look at some of their 112 collective figures um I the first kind of premium action figure that I ever purchased was from the 112 collective it was the Dark Knight Returns previews exclusive Batman that's kind of what is he? He's wearing gray and kind of blue, kind of tur turquoise type of color. And it's fabric and it's just, articulation is great. It's an amazing figure. And I haven't gotten any since then. So I wanted to just see what they got going on here. And here's one that definitely caught my attention. It's just a shame that a lot of these are 
on wait lists as opposed to being available for pre-order or just buying it outright. But check out this Spider-Man 2099 figure. I was just talking about him like a week or two ago. So as you can see, it has stretchy fabric, so you can't see the joints in any of the limbs or anything, maybe with the exception of the feet, but the rest of it is just going to be nice, stretchy fabric. And you know, as toy collectors, we love our cloth goods. Yeah, so this looks like a really cool figure. He's got that, um, he's got that web cape and everything. Awesome stuff. Interchangeable head, of course. I like that Spider-Man. And yeah, you can just kind of scroll through these. They got all kinds of properties, not just superheroes, although that makes up the bulk of it. Get some G.I. Joe stuff here with Roadblock, all four members of the Fantastic Four. I like this Batman Gotham by Gaslight. I'd imagine that maybe one day in the future, McFarlane will also make something like this if you didn't want to spend as much money. But yeah, it's like a steampunk uh, inspired Batman here. Again, with the cloth goods, he looks good. Look at the stitching around the cowl. I like that. And there's another picture in here. Oh yeah, let me go back. This is good to know. Includes a cloak with an integrated posing wire. You like that. So, you know, you get them coming down, you can get them swooping. I like that posing wire. And let's get a, the most steampunk look is this one right here. So this is a great looking figure, $115. So, you know, it ain't cheap, it ain't cheap, but he looks darn good. Approximately 17 centimeters tall, which is um, six and a half inches tall. So awesome figure from them. And yeah, let's just scroll through a little bit so you can see some of the rest that they have here. Constantine, Dr. Fate, few more Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Two-Face, always good to have Two-Face, Thanos. I remember when they first revealed this one, this Popeye and Bluto said, you can't get this anymore, but look at that. Look at the likeness of Popeye here. Scary realism. So these were pretty cool. Awesome stuff. So that is it for the Mezco things. And now finally, for the last figure that I wanted to show or collectible that I wanted to show, if I ever had the money to get it, I would definitely consider it. It's from our uh, good friends at the, wait for it, Pure Arts. So this is a Terminator 2 T-800 Battle Damaged Limited Edition Art Mask. But it's not a mask because you can't wear it. It's something you will put on a base or you will put on a wall. But for $430, you can get a one to one scale of a T-800 endoskeleton's head with lights. How cool is that? So it, it doesn't come with the three AAA or uh, AA batteries that you would need. I mean, come on, for 430 bucks, you can throw a few batteries in the box, but whatever. Take them out of the remote control. Uh, but this thing is made out of poly resin. Like I said, it's one to one scale. So it's life size at 18 inches tall. That's cool. Let's take a look at some of these pictures. We'll just swipe through them. Now, I do wish that it was the full head and not just like the front of the head. It would have been great to just, you know, have that all available instead of just being hollowed out. But if you look at it from the front, That'll be awesome enough. And let's look at that, that lava coming down. It's all kind of scratched up and stuff. It's a really, I love T-800s. I love these eyes. It's just, just something about them. Something about T-800s that's always just made me go, oh my God, that's so awesome. And I don't think that's ever going to change. Uh, yeah, so this is something that's pricey, but man, is it cool. Perhaps one day, one day. All right, so that's it. Those are all of the figures that caught my eye this week. Most of them, of course, being from McFarlane because man, just every week McFarlane has something new to show us, which, you know, I know that the whole side eye thing and the weird exclusive stuff going on with Target is pretty annoying at times, but you gotta give them credit for always showing us something new so often. It's not something that a lot of toy companies can say. 
So anyway, I'll be back next week with I'm sure will be some more McFarlane toy stuff and hopefully some other really interesting figures as well. Maybe even from, from some lines that I'm not too familiar with because it's always cool to see different things. So that's it. Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, I'm Jeremy and I'll talk to you later.